Today we're going to talk about some changes that are coming in the FreeBSD tool chain, and in particular in the linker world. Just to give you a small outline of what we're going to talk about, what is the motivation, why FreeBSD needs a new linker, and what are the problems with the linker that we currently ship in base. Then a little bit of history of how linker evolved from the 90s, let's say, until today. Um, when we propose a new linker, how does it differ from what was already in the landscape, also looking at other operating system? What does it bring for FreeBSD? Then we'll try to give some overview of how the linker is implemented. It's very high level. We won't go inside details. Of course, if you have some question, feel free to ask. And then plan for integration in newer version of FreeBSD and what's the future of work both on the linker side and on FreeBSD side. So the motivation is that this is the linker that is shipped with FreeBSD today. It's a nine-year-old linker. And I really, really want FreeBSD to be a viable option for developers, in particular C and C++ developers. And the linker ends up being the bottleneck in the um, uh, compile the bug edit cycle because when you modify a file, the compiler has to recompile only that file while the linker has most of the time look at every input file that comes in. And um, uh, the linker that ships with FreeBSD, it's very old and uh, it's also very slow. It has lots of um, um, historical baggage uh, users don't actually care about how the linker is implemented internally. They just want something that is very, very fast and also that produces something reasonable in terms of both code quality, as in performance of the runtime run performance of the executable, and also code size, because that's where the linker optimizes the most. Just if it's not very clear how terrible the linker that we currently ship is, there is an horror story, which is if you link Chromium or LibreOffice uh, from ports collection with the bug symbols, uh, there are cases where the link blows up. And <laughs> yeah, that's not great. And also, Given we don't take advantages of the new feature that linker will, the linkers will expose, we also, uh, when like Chromium crashes and we want debug info and we run Chromium under GDB, well, the time to read symbol is very, very large. So the time between when you run the GDB and when you can actually debug is not tolerable for many people. So we can actually do better. And what are the goals of the new linker? We want that to be simple in terms of architecture, so everybody can actually jump in and tack on, and we want something on which we can have control. And we also that to be fast. We will be a little bit more specific about that, what means fast, but just like we want to minimize the time that developer sits waiting for the compile for the tool chain to do its work. We want the linker to be almost future parity with GCC, uh, with uh, other GNU linkers. So, what does it mean? Almost future parity. We want to have the ability to drop. Um, let's say, features that we don't really need 
Um, we also want to be different in some cases uh, about handling stuff when it's appropriate. One of the goal, and what's actually really, really helpful for FreeBSD, is that this linker is part of LLVM. So uh, on the license side, it's BSD um, compliant, BSD-like, and this is not going to change, at least as far as I can tell. And um, uh, basically, we can import the new linker every time a new version of LLVM ships. And this is very good why? because when GPL v3 came out, we weren't able to import new virtual chain. And um, also, as long as we have lots of pieces in LLVM that uh, are, um, uh, or lots of pieces in FreeBSD that are already part of LLVM, we can have full control over the dual chain. So if uh, we want to introduce some new feature, uh, in the, we can increment both, let's say, in the compiler and in the linker, or in the assembler and in the linker. We can introduce feature across the whole pipeline. So just to sum up, let's make linking great again. Uh, so a little bit of history. Uh, historically, the linker that's shipped in from the 90s or even before in uh, Unix systems is ld.bfd. It's called this because it uses uh, libbfd. And uh, um, it added ALF support in 1993. It supports multiple format. It's also supported before a.out. It's a very old code base. And it's about 75k lines of C and shell script. If you ever look at that, that is it's pretty rusty. And uh, it seems like weird because like linkers, linkers are just a glorified version of cat, but the devil is in details <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so, uh, so this is why at Google, uh, Ian Lance Taylor and a small group of engineers started Gold in around 2006 which goal was mainly, mainly being a fast and maintainable link. Uh, it's actually very, very fast, and this is the main contribution of gold. It sort of set up the bar for how a linker should look like, what are the performance, both in linking time and sides of code, or sides of the executable generated. And um, it's still very, very big, not less it uses like STL and other facilities is 160k line and not using BFD. So we want to do better. So this crowd probably remembers the old new linker, like uh, what was the original uh, LOD. And it got started in 2012. Um, it suffered for a bit from over engineering. It was designed to like support all three formats, so similar ideas. BFD, but even more, um, even harder because of like proper support from Echo. Uh, that was not working too well. And then the new cough linker was started in May 2015 by Rui at Google. I remember I was in the airport going on vacations on May 1st, and that was like a very nice present as I was going out. I was like, really, really happy to see that happen. Um, and they're not sharing code, but sharing ideas of the, like, designing something that's specific to the format. The uh, new, new Elf linker got started in uh, July. The going a bit and just like why the linker that was being proposed before didn't quite work. The idea is for every file format, it would find what's the smallest indivisible unit, but it was based on the Mac idea, which is like bounded than every global symbol, which means for elf, then you have to remember the order they were in the start, you split and merge things back again. Um, it does introduce inefficiencies for like reading con dots, but the big summary is we're spending more effort like trying to cooperate over the three formats than just implementing like a link for the three formats to begin with. The new one is, well, just sections. If you're familiar with the ELF file, there pretty much everything is a section. 
and the sections is, well, whatever you want it to be. Like here you can have as many symbols as you want, like for the compiler normally if you're not optimizing, you put one section with everything, otherwise you just put as many symbols and the linker can optimize that. Uh, the conducts is one of the things we got, like very good performance, that for example C++, you have inline functions, you only want to keep one copy. The, uh, the way they have specs designed, you don't even page in those sections if you already found the test vector in uh, pushback, like you're not gonna page in those again. Since everything is implemented directly on sections, GC sections is fairly direct implementation, the identical overfolding is a fairly direct implementation. And if you know ELF, it's actually pretty easy to read. If you know ELF and C++, it's pretty easy to read. So, and the, 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 it's pretty much a direct map of like the ELF spec and other like ELF specific specs. And the few differences that are user visible from other ELF linkers, so like if you switch from the old BFD or if I use the code, what's the difference? The way we look libraries is not exactly the same. We going to go a bit on details, but for now, know that like, if you have a symbol that is finding multiple libraries, we might find the other symbol, and you also don't need to use start group and groups. This is, if you're familiar with Windows, that's exactly the uh, logic that link.exe uses, and we find it actually easier to reason about, and uh, it's, for the vast majority of cases, doesn't change, and uh, it's also faster. Another difference is, we do absolutely no attempt to like reduce how much we map. Like so we, you see a file, we map it in and leave it there until the end of the program, which works really, really nice in 64-bit host. I haven't even tried like link using this in a 32-bit. May or may not work. Uh, it's also always a cross-linker. You may or may not care, but it's actually very handy for us um, for development. And well, I guess you probably do since there's a talk of like doing one build of Clang for like when you're building for all targets. Well, you're gonna need one build of LOD only as well. And we try to be minimal. Uh, when we're at the point we're trying to do build words, we see a feature that's not, that's missing, see how many places uses, let's see if it's easier to change FreeBSD or it's easier to implement that. So, cool new stuff that the linker brings to FreeBSD. In particular, ARM64 support. Currently, ARM64 is in a sort of weird state because uh, it uses uh, an external BNUDILS ARM64 package that shipped import. So it's not able to bootstrap using all, everything that's in base, and it's not possible to implement this in BFD because, of course, the last version of BFD that can be shipped in FreeBSD predates uh, the architecture. While we are talking here, we also support x86-64 and i386 and part of MIPS for some definition of, because the ABI is very complicated. Uh, yeah. yeah, if you basically read that the code, uh, every special casing or every complicated logic basically comes from the MIPS ABI. Um, we do identical code folding and LTO. I'll talk a little bit more in the uh, uh, slide in the in the next slides. We support uh, new GNU ABI, new dialect, for example, GNU2, uh, and this allows uh, the uh, linker to relax and produce better code. And we have lots of optimization. I'll go a little bit more in the details also later. The linker is fast, as we will show up, and it's maintained. We have currently 60 contributors overall in the whole history, at least this is what they checked on GitHub. And uh, there is support from Google, from Sony, and some other companies to develop this linker. And uh, we also are officially part of the LLVM uh, uh, community, so we leverage uh, 
basically uh, all the um, uh, infrastructure of the LVM community. Uh, build bots, mailing list, SVN repository, of course, but in particular the reviewers and in general people come uh, and look at the LLVM, LLD commit mailing list and give useful feedback. So this is very important. So link time optimizations, uh, it's a different mode of optimization. Basically the classic mode of optimization is that where you optimize uh, each translation unit separately. And this uh, uh, sort of like has a very narrow scope of optimizations. The goal of uh, LTO is uh, increasing the scope of the optimization to almost the whole executable. We say almost the whole executable because uh, uh, the whole executable is not visible, uh, technically speaking, un until runtime because the user may load other libraries, for example, using the Um How this works is basically the compiler uh, emits uh, bitcode files, which is the format which the optimizer likes to work on, uh, instead of uh, elf relocatable object files. And the linker can read this back um, and resolving the symbol. Basically, the neat thing is that all the other, all the other linkers implement this using uh, a plugin while the support in LLD is built in inside the linker. Once the linker sees all this optimization, sees all this file, it merges together and then applies interprocedural optimization, for example, inlining and custom folding. And this actually results in better code uh, being generated because, of course, inlining and custom folding works across translation unit. Identical code folding is a Optimization that shows up uh, from the observation that uh, libraries have 10% of function which have exactly the same code and they can be folded. Uh, example is the, um, the uh, STL in C++. For example, the templated uh, implementation for vector and uh, for int and long is exactly the same. So why do we need to take the same function and copy twice. We can use only once. There is a caveat because it changes the semantic of the final executable. So um, uh, whenever we rely on uniqueness of pointers for the function, we don't actually, uh, uh, we, we may not actually uh, perform this optimization and this is the safe variant. We actually only implement currently the unsafe variant, which unconditionally folds this. So we didn't find the case in FreeBSD where this matters yet. Other optimization, um, there are some sections that are marked with a specific flag, SHA underscore merge, which means that the content of this section can be the duplicated, the unique. Uh, we uh, do merge string uh, at O1. Basically, the linker has optimization level, which are completely different from what the compiler does, but they're also always, op they, have completely, uh, they have completely different set of optimization. And strings are tile merged at O2. And one feature, that's probably the first linker that implements. When we garbage collect section, we also uh, remove uh, uh, dead uh, uh, entries that are marked SSH as as SHA underscore merge. Then we have a bunch of optimization for uh, exceptional handling. Uh, well, I don't want to go in the detail too much, but something I want to mention about is that we create a section that H frame header that contains a pointer to the exception handling framework and a binary table in order to access information uh, efficiently. And then uh, some of the relocation that we have uh, are relaxed to produce better code. 
and in some case uh, avoid uh, extra hop and extra jump through uh, tables that uh, the executable uses, like gobbler offset table. The linker is fast. This is my favorite slide of the talk. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's like, so these are numbers that are collected uh, using tempfs on FreeBSD. And um, uh, basically, they are relative to what uh, LLD does. LLD starts at one, and uh, the other two linker are gold and BFD. As we may see, is uh, yeah, yeah, current ones. Yeah, this is not the the BFD that's shipped with FreeBSD. That's the newer version, so it should it's supposed to be better. Maybe, and um, uh, as we as we can see, there are some cases where uh, uh, BFD is takes six to seven times more to link um, than LLD does, and also gold uh, in general takes two to three times to link more than GCC does. So. Uh, we also made some experiments and we enabled the optimization. For example, as you can see here, if you can read that, we try to build Chrome with and without identical code folding. Here the bar for BFD is missing because they don't implement that optimizations. And we are still pretty fast. We tried a large number of workload. At least this is the hope. We also tried SilaDB, which is a database written in C++ tailored for high performances. And we also tried as a benchmark uh, enabling a function section data section is an option that the compiler has to emit each function uh, in a, a different uh, section. This of course causes more overhead but allows more aggressive garbage collection. And yeah, LED happens to be uniformly fast. So Rafael will talk about the implementation. Just uh, before, one other feature that we have that's nice, unfortunately didn't uh, have time to benchmark. Most of the time you're doing, uh, the link spans actually merging strings. So all those comparisons, all these comparisons are like both linkers doing the same work, but uh, if you're, it did, but builds the bug cycle and you really don't care like if your binary is twice as big, you can just pass all zero, disable optimizations, and it's even faster than that. And so I'm gonna talk a bit about the implementation. Feel free to stop or if you have any other questions since the main point of the presentation is to like suggest it using it in LOD. So this is just a bit of like going in for like if anyone is curious on like how we did the trick. So one of the things we're quite proud is it's pretty small-ish. It's like 13,000 lines of C++. Uh, part of it is just that we use LLVM, but quite a bit is also being very careful like on the design. There's very little target-specific code. Uh, the orders, the archives can go as also independent since when you first see a symbol in archive, just remembering at any point further down the link, if you see another find, we fetch it, which we're doing a build order and we're seeing uh, all these runs of this sort, which I assume is like topological sort, we might be able to just drop it. On the, uh, going a bit down the implementation, every total file has a bunch of sections and we just map the regular ones to like input section. If it's a section that's special in any way, if it's like age frame or it's just merge strings, those got dedicated sections. And as we read in, like if you're already stuck on that, just don't read it. And for this part, if you're doing LTO, we, we couldn't care less if it's bitcode or alpha, we just read through and like create the symbols. And this is a quick representation of what the symbol table calls, does, and then I can explain a bit better how the, uh, the lazy archives work. So let's say you read object one first, and it has two global symbols, you allocate like error for them in like stable position in memory. As we read object two and you see symbol foo being used again, there's, now you have to do a symbol lookup, right? There's, there's lots and lots and lots of symbols and 
the fewer lookups you do, the better. So we do exactly one hash table lookup. We find that they already have a full, and we in place modify it. So consider a few cases. If the object one has an undefined symbol, now it points to the definition. If the object one was actually just an archive member, and now we get a use, at this point we go, oh, okay, let's go fetch the member. And for local symbols, we just create like a allocate structure on the side, and but this one never goes in the symbol table. So the thing to take is we look at the name itself once for an object file. So there is never going to be a hash lookup again. Like if we now want the relocation object one that uses symbol foo, that's just an index. We just find by index, find a pointer, and it's there. The once we, the linker has walked all the object files in every symbol, reports if there is any error, like there isn't, we know everything that should be on the output. At this point, we have which sections refer to sections. We can GC, we have the contents of the sections, we can merge identical ones, and we do the part that's the glorified cat. We pick every input section and they get concatenated. So you have text section in all the object files that go together, data sections of object files go together, and the link also creates a few sections of its own. Like it's going to create a combined symbol table, it's going to create a section for the dynamic relocations. And at this point, then it's really, we finish the glorified cat point. Now comes the glorified sad. So all the reference, they had a, you called malloc and now we, we found malloc. We actually have to make that reference match. And there are even more locations than symbols, right? Your program can have a few thousand files, it's gonna have tens of thousands of symbols, hundreds of thousands of locations. And it's unfortunately we can't actually just do one pass over them, but we can get pretty close. Uh, I can go a bit more detail, but one way to see why you can't do just one pass is like there is a dynamic relocation that's part of the output file. We want them mapped out to the file, so you need to know how many they are. So, okay, we're gonna have to do more than one pass. So at least we try, once you walk the locations, you remember as much as possible about them. And the, there is a few target hooks, but if for a simple target, there's actually, there's actually one. Given a relocation, give me the expression for it. So if it's an absolute relocation, you just, it just say it's an absolute one. Doesn't matter if it's 32 bits for 34 bits, 64. PC relocation, PLT, got. So there are far fewer expressions than there are relocation types. And given the expression, now in complete target-dependent code, we can reason about we need a got, we need a PLT, do we need a copy relocation, do we need a dynamic relocation. And we store this information on the side. And once we did this one scan, now we know the entire size of the file. And we scan the, uh, now the saved information to apply the relocations. Um, some work that's still left to be done, version scripts. We support versions, so if your library has versions, we cop them out, we record which version you used, but version scripts, we only support the very basic case where you just want to export a few symbols everywhere and hide everything else. Um, linker scripts, we gonna get at least build water build kernel working, either by modifying build kernel and build word or by modifying linker script support. So whatever is more sensible for each case. Uh, one nice feature Gold has that we should have at some point is layout, structure section layout. If you have profile information or you have like, you know for some reason that some code is hot, some co code is cold, you can put them together. Uh, split the wharf is one thing I personally want. It's lovely, like most of, if you're building with debug information, the biggest part of the file is the debug information just put it in a separate file and the linker doesn't even have to look at that. The, um, which makes linking a lot faster. The, uh, another one is GDB index for what they're saying, like if for a special, like we build like pretty big C++ applications. You start GDB and the things spend ages like looking over the debug information just to build the index. So you, when you do a break, you know where it is and the linker can do that work. One case that's interesting, both Mozilla and I'm pretty sure Chromium have a hack for that as well, is relative location. You do a good job, you build your fairly self-contained shell library. It has very few interfaces exposes, but 
it has a million like internal locations that just to add the load address. And ELF currently treats that as any other location. It uses 24 bytes per every point where you want to add the load address. We can special case that in something that's far more compact. And one last sort of optimization that I want to do is um, it's implemented for Solaris is direct binding. When the linker is running, it found malloc, right? It knows it's in libc, and it may as well just write that to the file. Otherwise, when the dynamic linker starts, it's going to be looking, oh, where's malloc? Uh, GDK, no. GDK, no. Oh, libc, found it. And you call free, and the off it goes again, searching every dot or so until it finds it. Oops. So there is still some work to integrate this in FreeBSD. Some of that has been fixed recently. Some of that is ongoing. So the linker that is shipped in FreeBSD allows section, uh, in particular text, to be marked read-write. We don't. And we changed that in FreeBSD. We would like to not support this feature unless there is a very good reason to. Uh, we want to remove dependency on older um, build system, uh, all, all, all the uh, linker feature that the build system uses. For example, it uses dash Y for Solaris compatibility. Uh, there are other ways to implement this. So we would like to sort of audit every make file in FreeBSD and uh, uh, modernize that as part of this effort. As we handle uh, uh, library search differences, uh, if we handle, uh, if we handle uh, library differently, we want to fix uh, uh, library search differences. Recently, we found a case uh, in the hash function skin. There was a, a, fi a file that was a symbol that was actually included by two object files, was defined in two object files. Uh, <coughs> yeah, in crypto. Yeah, in crypto. There was a symbol that was defined by two object files. And for the way we handle symbol resolution, the link failed. We fixed that. We need to implement dash t text. It's uh, not a major undertaking. Just nobody did that. It basically takes the uh, set, uh, takes the argument and sets the load address of the uh, text section to that value. As Rafael pointed out before uh, version scripts and linker scripts are an ongoing effort. Uh, linker scripts are almost enough to link everything in base. Kernel needs some more work. In particular, we miss the um, sections uh, directive, uh, so to decide how to place section in the final executable. But other than that, we already support uh, uh, align keep uh, arithmetic expression, so it's almost there. Uh, version scripts are quite tricky to get efficiently in the general case because of wildcard matching for symbols, which is generally nonlinear, but we want to implement at least enough to get libc to work. So the plan is once LLVM will release, which is in September, so three, four months from now. We want to have a version of LLD that has all this stuff and whatever we discover fixed and import that in FreeBSD. Unfortunately, the new linker would make it for 11. Our hope is to provide that at least as an alternative linker in 11.1 and then decide what to do. Where there is, there was an ongoing discussion with George at the Dev Summit about betting when the linker will be ready because it's the last. Uh, well, yeah. So yeah, lots of testing. It's been very important because uh, running on a large correction, large collection of executables as FreeBSD is uh, showed uh, a lot of bugs in the linker. 
and uh, also help add uh, the direction of the linkers, what we tried to implement, what we did not. So it's been, it's been great so far and looking forward to uh, faster linker in FreeBSD. That's it. If there are any questions. Oh yeah, I, I, I have a run. Uh, it's uh, about uh, 10,000 ports built. It's like about one month old. So things may have improved recently. It's like 10,000 ports uh, running and 3,000 fail and 8,000 are skipped because uh, I think libpng fails because the link, uh, the version script that ships with libpng is not parsed correctly. So it's about 50%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we plan to have uh, Pudrier run, let's say, every week. Yeah, yeah. There is going to be, of course, some time in which the old uh, and the new linker will coexist as Clang and GCC do now, but yeah, the idea is to fix every bug. Question. Where are we fixing the O format of minus Y in your build now? Um, in minus Y got basically in the summit. Uh, it got built for 32 bit uh, compatibility. Uh, o format is used on 32 bit. I386 boot or something like that, yes. Yeah. 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 I just do a grep and put my timeline in there. Okay. Oh, there's no fixing or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Yes. Um, you mentioned you added the um, IO and the old IO. Is that hard to get to? Um, future work. It's future. That's in progress. Yes. So the thing I really want is like um, testing for just clang and using goals. Like if you just build your program with DWO, the linker gets a lot faster, but now your debugger gets a lot slower. If you just use GDB index, then the, uh, the debugger gets a lot faster, but your link gets a lot slower. Combining both works great. And uh, the one thing that then doesn't work is Ccache. So what I want is like, a fusion of the fission uh, dwarf. So it's produced the same form as DWO, so you don't have locations for the strings, for the debug strings, but they still keep it on the same file. So that way, Ccache should work. You produce like fast links and the debugger starts faster, but not implemented yet. Yes, that's what we mean by it's always a cross-linker. So yeah, it should be possible to build FreeBSD for our architectures with one client binary and one LOD binary. Yes, one particular amusing part of the uh, all of like the object support in LVM and almost all of the L linker is completely templated over big little Indian 3264 bits. So almost the entirety of the linker is a template for that. Yes? I have not tried. So CTF is the alternative to Dwarf, right? For the, uh, like it's a simplified version of Dwarf. The CTF is like the dwarf-like table, right? It's a 
But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it includes part of the dwarf information. Yeah, it's a subset of the, the dwarf. Uh, summary. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You might want to look at just having MC produce that directly, but yeah, that should be linker independent. If it's, a, it's just a bunch of sections concatenate, we concatenate. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Any particular features you depend on, or? Uh, they are supported, and they're not particularly tested. So I'm pretty sure they're. That's probably like the buggier area on the. Yeah, we build. I haven't tried like doing a like install the system boot to, to do a bootstrap. But. Yes. Going, one, going once, going twice, and. None. Thank you for.